January 26th, 1870, Fort Russell, Wyoming Territory. Dear Brother Michael, I received your welcome letter this afternoon. I was very glad to hear that you and all the family in Cracklow were well. Michael, I'm in first-rate health. I was never better in my life. This Rocky Mountain air agrees with me first-rate. I have everything that would tend to make life comfortable. But still, at night, when I lay in bed, my mind wanders off across the continent and over the Atlantic to the hills of Cradlow. In spite of all, I can never forget home, as every Irishman in a foreign land can never forget the land he was raised in. Every stone, gap, and field in Cradlow and its surroundings are as clear in my mind as when I was home. I must close and remain as ever your devoted brother, Morris H. Wolf. Right soon. Maurice Wolf was one of the seven million men and women who came out of Ireland to America in the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. The Irish immigrants whose lives transformed and were transformed by the histories of two nations. They would make for themselves a life in America, but their story truly begins in Ireland. Perhaps the ability of the Irish to survive in America can best be explained by their reaction to the cruel slogan, no Irish need apply. They set it to music and made it one of the most popular songs of the 1870s. I am a decent Irish man and I come from Ballyfad and I want a situation and I want it mighty bad. A position I saw advertised is a thing for me, says I, but the dirty spalpeen ended with no Irish need apply. Well, says I, but that's an insult, but to get this place I'll try. So I went to see the blackguard with no Irish need apply. Well, some may think it a misfortune to be christened Pat or Dan, but to me it is an honour to be born an Irish man. Well, in the song, he goes on to beat the living daylights out of the fellow and to extract a promise from him never again uh, to put up a sign that says no Irish need apply. The 200-year history of Irish Catholic emigration to America is dominated by the image of the immigrant as exile. The great, long-standing dream for many of those exiles was to someday return to Holy Mother Ireland. Among their number was the Irish-speaking immigrant from County Cork, Timothy Cashman. Timothy Cashman spent only a few weeks revisiting the haunts of his youth. But before he left, he walked again in Glenbower Woods, the place that was, for him, the embodiment of Mother Ireland. There, in the stone of the old bridge, Timothy Cashman carved his name in Gaelic script. Then he left and came home. Home to America. <laughs> 